your social security number has a secret code that doesn't really mean anything. But here's how it works. If you lived in or were born in the US, chances are you have a social security number. These numbers were created in the 1930s to specifically track how much citizens earned so the social security program could accurately pay out benefits when people reached retirement age. However, today, the system has expanded to any number of personal identification needs throughout the government and private sector. In essence, your social security number is your barcode that identifies you in the US. But how do all these numbers remain unique while also identifying the individual? It turns out there's a secret code to help make sure that everyone gets their own number. Social security numbers have three parts to them separated by dashes, with the first being the area number, the second being the group number, and the final four being the serial number. The area number describes the geographical location the card was issued in. Before 1972, they represented the state the card was issued, not where the person lived. However, post-1972, all cards started being issued in the Social Security office in Baltimore, and then were issued based on the zip or postal code in the card application. The numbers usually go from lowest in the northeast and get higher as they move west. While the code does represent the zip where one person was living when they were born, it isn't actually used for anything else actionable now, it's just a simple naming convention to create a unique number. Second, the group number ranges from 01 to 99 and used to be assigned in an odd and even order based on states. However, since 2011, the agency switched to randomly assigning group numbers, so this convention doesn't work exactly like this anymore. Finally, the serial numbers at the end run 0001 through 9999, and those are just assigned in sequence. At the end of the day, the area number is the most prominent state-specific code, with each state then being able to use the group and serial numbers in sequential order. Believe it or not, this is actually enough variance in numbers that there's still more than 50% of potential social security numbers left to be issued. And eventually, older numbers will start being rolled over into new ones in another 50 or 70 years when the available numbers finally run out.